Hey guys, just want to do a quick little uh, maybe studio update here. Um, I haven't done some videos in a couple of weeks um, and people have been asking in the comment section and on Instagram as I'm posting some new pictures. Uh, when's a new video coming? When's a new video coming? And I'm in the middle of mixing a, a full length album for a band that I can't really talk about yet. Um, and so obviously um, I've been busy and which is really good. I'm really blessed. And I have not been able to do our regular, let's shoot out gear against plugins and all those kinds of things. But I figured I would just, um, I gave you a video a couple of weeks ago showing you the finalized positioning of the new studio rack and some of the gear. And I got two new pieces of gear um, in the rack I wanna show you now and just talk about it a bit and just give you kind of an update. And every so often I'll try to give you an update. I'm in the middle of, as I said, mixing and I can't let you listen to the music. Um, but I'll be really, really anxious to, uh, to share this with you in the next couple of months once the album is done and released. And all I can tell you is that um, I'm very fortunate, very blessed, very happy to be working with these guys. Uh, a lot of uh, players on this record from bands that we all know and love, uh, the likes of Yes and Alice Cooper and the Moody Blues and Super Tramp and Toto, those are the kinds of musicians and the bands that these artists have and, and currently play with. So a lot of great um, music being made and I'm really happy to be a part of mixing the album. Anyway, so let's uh, give you kind of a walk around. I'll show you what's new. So um, the first thing I wanna show you, if you watched the last video, I mean, I'm ex more excited about this than anything else. I'm gonna sit down here in the chair. And again, it's all being shot with the iPhone no lavalier mic so i apologize for the video and audio quality but you can see if you watched the last video we now have all of our cables laying flat on the floor we're not hanging in the air anymore i finally replaced those the last three cables that were kind of up in the air because they were short i got 20 footers put those in so now all our cables are nice and cable tied laying flat on the floor going around the back of the rack i still got to do some more cable tying there and I repurposed those three cables and we got, and it's not hooked up yet, but they're coiled up here on the side. Um, now we're gonna have the ability to print all the direct outs from all 32 long faders into the DAW if we wanted to do that. So not that I would do that often, but it'll be an interesting test. If you just ran a bunch of stem files through the board with no processing, um, how does that, what is the SSL in and of itself contribute to the sound of that. And we're gonna do that because we're gonna be able to do direct outs. So we have the cables already here. I repurposed those cables. All 32 faders will be able to print direct outs. They just need to be hooked up to the quantums, which I have not done because I don't feel like pulling that out in the middle of a project, but they're all hooked up to the SSL. They are labeled and they're ready to go. So that'll be for another video. So my favorite part about this whole project <laughs> are the cables are laying flat on the floor finally. I uh, got myself a cool little lamp here, which I'm really happy about. Okay, so let me show you the two new pieces of gear. So in the last video I showed you, we talked about what was here, which was an SPL transient designer. And I thought I said I might be uh, sending those back. I wasn't sure if I was gonna keep that. And I decided to try something else instead. I sent that back and I bought the API 5500 parametric, four band parametric stereo EQ, which right now is being strapped uh, on the drum bus after the NG bus compressor by Wes Audio, um, and it just sounds amazing. Just really brought the real low thickness and punch to the drums that I was looking for for this project, and that's what I got. So that is the API 5500. I've used it on two songs now on the drum bus, and it sounds great. It's uh, stereo or dual mono, so you could patch it around via the patch bay to any track, or you could put it on the stereo bus, but right now, it is on the drum bus. And we'll do some sound examples and stuff once I get through this project down the road. I'll let you guys listen to that and you'll get a chance to hear that. The other piece of gear that I got that I really like um, is this SPL, oops, SPL Deesser, which is being patched in on my lead vocal right now. I gotta tell you, I've never used a hardware deesser. Um, if you've watched any of my mixing courses in the box at homerecordingmadeeasy.com where I mix all with plugins, um, you'll know that I've done lots of videos where we do DSing and stuff on vocals with plugins. And I normally don't like plug-in DSers. They normally don't work that well. You gotta futz with them a lot. It's a real pain. And you end up going in and manually DSing the vocal track itself, which I've showed you how to do. Again, go check the Home Recording Made Easy YouTube channel and just search DS on my videos and you'll see it. Anyway, I gotta tell you, my first experience with a hardware DSer 
It works awesome. It is so perfect. It, it took two seconds to dial it in and it works. Um, and this uh, SPL one has a, um, what is it, a high S and a low S band, um, which is cool. That's like kind of a, um, a preset for female or male vocal. Um, and then you could turn on the low band de and the high band de separately, and then you can bypass the unit here. And I gotta say, it works perfect. It's not too much. It's not too little. It just, it just freaking works. It just freaking works, and I really, really like it a lot. So though, that's a really cool piece. And that's about a $400 unit. I think I bought it brand new for 425 bucks. I might actually think about getting a couple more at one point for background vocals, but um, this works really good. So SPL DS works great. My first experience with a hardware DSer. Um, and then again, the API 5500 EQ. So the transient designer went back, keeping the API EQ, I think for now. And uh, that's it. Oh, the other thing I showed you in the last video, but this is the first uh, song or the last song that I mixed where I used the uh, the Audioscape 76F on the lead vocal. Man, that's a great sounding compressor. Really, really great. Um, we're gonna be doing a video, Dave and I soon, probably in the next month or so, once I get past this first project, where we're gonna compare the sound between that the Audioscape 76A and the 76D, uh, the black. So we're gonna compare the sound between the three Audioscape 76s, and then we'll probably throw in the bluey for measure, um, but they're really cool. So that the black is much more warm sounding and more bottom heavy, a little more warm on the bottom end. The blue stripe has a real nice open top end in comparison, and this F sits kind of right in the middle. It almost sounds a lot like the bluey to me, but not as aggressive as the bluey. Really nice, I really like it on lead vocals. So that's the 76F, again, using that for the first time uh, here on, uh, on a song. And I really like the way it sounds. So we got four 1176 style compressors, which is great. Um, I've been using the 76 Black on bass quite a bit. I've been using on lead guitar, the blue stripe, and then the vocal for that, which is really cool. <clears throat> been using the de-esser, or the de-essers, the distressors a lot more. We got some horn sections I've been using them on. I've really been liking those. Those are really cool. My Aphex 204s uh, basically are always for toms now. We have four toms on this record in every single song, so we're using all four channels for the four tom tracks. It really makes toms sound great. I no longer, at least currently, using them on kick and snare. I really don't need it. Uh, the kick and snare is all being really handled on the drum bus by the API EQ, which is great and then with the West Audio compressor, which is cool too. So that's kind of an update uh, quick. I know it's a short video. It's kind of an update vlog style just to show you where we're at now. And again, all my cables are on the floor. I'm really happy about that. Got the cool lamp, <laughs> which is always nice. And, uh, and we're working on a song. Actually, it's getting to the end of the song here. It's gonna loop around in a second. Oh yeah, some people uh, asked me, because I, I failed to mention, uh, we are no longer, we're missing something as you can see. We're missing the UF-8, the SSL UF-8. I got rid of it. And uh, I, I thought about it, and the reason why I got rid of it was really for uh, one reason and one, well, a couple of reasons. One, I really bought it more for the plug-in control than anything else, where you can control the parameters from a plug-in. I think I might've showed that in one of our earlier videos, at least in part. Um, and for the transport control, because I didn't, you know, so you didn't need to have mouse and keyboard. And what I found was two things. Number one, I found that I'm not using as many plugins as I was before because now we're so blessed to have all this hardware. I'm not using a channel strip strapped across the entire mix like I was before. Um, as a matter of fact, I mean, the session that I'm working on now, again, I can't let you listen to it, but <laughs> you'll see it's almost back, it's almost completely done. There's only three plugins in the whole mix. That's it. There's only three plugins or four plugins in the entire mix. All these tracks, none of them have plugins on them. There's really no reason to because it just, I'm using it, the hardware is good enough. Um, and so what that meant was I'm really not, wasn't really using it for plugin control as much. And honestly, um, as much as I hate to say it, cause I thought it would be the exact opposite. I thought, oh, it would be much faster to use plugin control with the UF-8. Um, and it wasn't, it was faster to use my trackball. It just was. And I and I really uh, tried to, for a few songs, not on this project, but on other songs that I've mixed, 
for people. I was trying to use only the UF8 and just use it for the plug in control and the transport control and try not to use the mount. And I just found it wasn't that. For transport control, I much like the fader port, single channel fader port. They got the bigger buttons on them where the UF8 had these tiny little buttons at the top of it. And for automation, I'm only automating, I only really automate one thing at a time typically. So all I really needed was a single channel. So it's a, it, the, the UF8 was a great unit. It looks so cool in the SSL origin. It looked really nice. I'm sure if you, you've seen in other videos, but it wasn't practical. And so I decided to sell it. And I said, you know what? I'm gonna sell it. I'm gonna keep my keyboard up there because it was getting in the way down here. Um, if I have any plugins to control, I'm using this and it's super fast. And then I got all my transport control and my automation right here, which is perfect. I decided to leave the master section towards the top because this fader port kind of takes all this room. But this is cool because I have all of this here, right here. And uh, it worked out pretty good. So I got rid of the UF8. So that that's it. So we're working on a tune. And um, you know, we're going to keep working. And I'll try to bring some of these uh, little updates uh, as I get to them. Um, I wish I could do more stuff in depth for you guys right now. But I just can't based on this project. So that's cool. Oh, and the other thing that I added is I added myself a little sidecar table. A little table on wheels here that wheel out of the way. And really this is just for keeping my notes. I keep detailed records of all my mixes and for historical stuff and recall sheets and all of that right here. And what's really cool about this is this will actually is a, is a sit stand. So if you wanted to, if I wanted to, if I wanted to stand up, you could stand up and use it as well. But it's really uh, nice to have this right next to me. Now I'm not gonna be able to lower it with one hand. Uh, when I'm just sitting here and I just have all my notes and anything I need and you know, right here is as opposed to you know laying it on top of the console and bumping all the faders, it was becoming a real pain. So I decided to just get one of these little tables on Amazon, um, and uh, that's it. And I can't lower it now because I only have one hand. But anyhow, it just it goes up and down with a little cylinder there. So that kind of just sits near, and then when I'm not using it, I can wheel it out of the way. So that's our quick update for this week. Again, like, share, subscribe. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, stay tuned. There'll be more, uh, you know, educational things in the future, probably in the next uh, month or two. Um, because after this record's done, I'm actually already uh, in talks to mix their next record, which has already been recorded. So I might be doing two full length albums uh, back to back, which is really, really good. Um, and it's just such a such a joy to mix with this stuff. You've seen the journey from the beginning. You've seen us all set it up and crawling around underneath the console and plugging in cables and everything. And it's so much fun now to finally see all this stuff come to fruition and all working together and working well. And the most important thing is the clients absolutely love the sound. Every mix that I've given them so far, I've gotten one uh, set of revisions, very, very minute things needed to be adjusted. A couple of little bump this up, bump this down volume wise. And they are just absolutely thrilled with the sound that's coming out of this gear. And so um, I'm really happy with it. It's working really well and I'm learning a lot. And the more I work on this, the more I'm learning and that will turn into videos for you guys. So make sure you like, share, subscribe. And uh, oh, that's all oh, I think also too, I didn't show you this before I sign off. I added this to the mix here. So this is just a little cheap $25 boom box I bought on eBay. That's kind of my final test. So I'm checking everything actually on five sets of speakers, five playback systems. I'm checking on my Focals, checking on my Avtones, two. I'm checking on my headphones, my Neumann headphones, which is three. I'm checking on this, which is four. And then the last uh, thing I'm checking after that is I'm checking them uh, also on my uh, my in the box rig, my IK Multimedia iLouds. And if uh, and when the bat when the mix sounds balanced on all of those you don't get any revisions. Very, very few notes from the client, which is great. Um, and this is usually the last stop right here. Once I'm listening to the mix back here and I know everything's balanced and it sounds right, you don't get any notes back from the client, which is perfect. They're real happy with the mix right out of the box first pass, which I'm really happy with. So anyway, I'm gonna sign off now. Like, share, subscribe, give me the old thumbs up. Let me know what you think and I will see you guys uh, in the next video sometime in the near future. Thanks, guys.